Hello, my word wizards. Hello, my friends. How are you? I hope you're doing good. I hope you're hanging in there as things kind of wind down from the summer and get into a new season. And you'll notice I don't have a guest on with me today if you're watching the vodcast of this podcast episode. And that is because I have been wanting to talk to you about a topic that uh, multiple guests have kind of brought up lately and also because it's the season and everyone's starting to think about it and stress about it a little bit more. Before we get to that, I want to note that today I am fully hair done, some makeup on going on, and that is because I have not been writing. So yes, you can still write in your sweats and pull your hair up because that's what this is about, being comfortable with each other and with writing. So today we're going to talk about the ever grueling query process, which I know you've read things about it. I know you've listened to other episodes maybe or read articles and of course you've done your research because you're probably where I'm at and you're probably querying your manuscript. So don't take this as just me going to preach to you how to do it because I like to pull from the experts. Particularly what we're going to talk about today is how to make your querying rejection process sting less. And I'm going to talk about three ways that we can do that that I've pulled from it. But first I want to show you if you're not watching, I am picking up a notebook that has a Jane Austen quote about being fond of dancing <laughs> on it. And inside of this notebook that I have is a record of pages of agents and and agencies and the time I, I submitted to them and the time I was rejected. So these are all rejections. And the reason that I keep track of these is not because I like to torture myself, despite popular belief, but because I do think it's important to know who you've already queried to, both for the sake of resubmission, but also to know where you come from. It doesn't mean you have to be like, oh, I had this many queries and was rejected this many times, but I do think it is important to kind of know where you're at. And so I am with you in that boat, and it has been grueling. And I started querying right when the pandemic, of course, spread far and wide, and that's been a challenge in itself because there have been so many people at home who are like, oh, I've always wanted to write a book. I'm going to write this book. And then they start submitting it after the pandemic, right? And we've got just this totally concentrated pool of new writers striving to try and get that out there to people. And also, I think it's been down 30, 34% was the last time that I looked at it, the acceptance rate, because they just have a lot on their plate. Agents don't have as much room right now to just keep taking on people. So it is getting fall season though, and that is the season where people start to hunker down, they start to submit more queries, and they start to worry more about their rejections, right? You don't have all these crazy summer activities that are keeping you busy, and that can be a problem. So one thing that I want you to know, first thing, about making that sting sting a little less, is that you've got to stop trying to expect yourself not to respond emotionally or mentally to a rejection. And I'm not saying you should have a crazy pity party or that it should tear you apart, because if it is tearing you apart, then this is probably not the place for you career-wise. But it's going to sting. It's like if a bee comes and stings you, it's going to happen. You're going to feel it, right? And so there is a little bit of hope threaded into every rejection that you receive, right? You see this thing on your email. Maybe you're about your tasks of the day, whatever. You open it up, and that, that little thread of hope is what keeps you reading these rejections. And so don't try to get rid of the hope, and you are going to take a pause and be like, oh, I don't want to, you know, get myself to get my hopes up too high. But let it sink in for a minute and accept that it was a rejection and accept that it's another just small step on your journey and your path as a writer and say, okay, this is going to sting. Have your 10-second pity party if you need to. Be like, oh, man, this is, this is sucky. <laughs> This is going to take longer than I want it to, but I am grueling at it, and this is how it is, and accept it and move on with your activities for the day, right? So don't mull over it, but do give it a minute to sting, and let that, let that happen, and expect it to happen, because it's going to, and if you keep trying to avoid it, it's just going to make it worse. So that's my advice number one for you, from personal experience and from other advice from writers published. Two, I have an episode coming up next week that is so perfect in congruence with this, which is why I really felt like it was time to release this episode, which is I've got an excellent writer. Her name is Damianti Biswas, and she is exceptional. She has got the most abundance-minded, giving personality. You can tell right off the bat she just wants to help others just for the sake of helping them, not because she feels like she deserves anything in return. And she'll talk in the episode, and I don't want to give too much of it away, but 
about how your query letter is just a business transaction. Stop thinking of it as this ethereal, mystical connection that you have to make or some super, super lucky connection that may maybe somebody was in a good enough mood to like look at your query letter and not reject it immediately, right? This is a business transaction. You are looking, you're writing a letter to someone that you think could be a business partner with you in trying to sell this product because guess what? Once you have an agent, it is not the roses after that. And she'll talk about that. Your your journey has only just begun. So stop thinking of it as this unattainable thing and think of it as, oh, just not the right business partner, not the right timing. They don't need me right now. Maybe it's not in the market right now that they're looking for and move on. Because obviously they're not going to be able to help you make the money that you need to because in the end the goal of both of you is to make money off of it if you're trying to publish right also to reach hopefully touch other people's lives or inspire them to enjoy reading i've got my own motivations for that as well but you've got to stop thinking of it as something that is more than it is if that makes sense last last tip we're almost done the third thing that i found to be extremely helpful and have heard many others including Thumyanti, from the upcoming episode is to reward yourself for the rejections and i'm not saying go and buy yourself hundred dollars of items every time because that sounds like more of a pity party which i mean retail therapy could be nice but it's finding little ways to remind yourself that you are doing something that by getting these rejections you're moving forward on your path and your journey and you're getting a little bit closer to finding that one person who's going to help you, to finding that one little bit of feedback that's going to help you make your manuscript or your query letter better. And so for me, I'll share what I did. So I started this, you might have noticed on my notebook, when I opened it up, it says 101 queries on the top of it, very first page. And I had decided that because I am a classic Disney movie girl, I like all the classics growing up, you know, obviously as a kid, I was definitely involved in that, as you can tell from some things on my shelves. I decided that once I read, once I received 101 rejections after sending out 101 different queries, I was going to watch 101 Dalmatians and have a movie party with people that I love and just enjoy it. And I haven't seen it in a long time. I haven't watched it because I'm like waiting for that time so it can be nice and fresh in my mind. And it's actually been a fun thing to look forward to. It's like, oh, I'm a little bit closer to my movie party. And maybe a movie party isn't the reward for you. But the point is, every time I get that rejection, I check it off, I say I'm a little bit closer to my goal, and I'm a little bit closer to doing something that's going to be fun for me and, and kind of mark a milestone in my life of just proving to myself that I have the grit to move forward. You could also, maybe you're in a work day and you know you need to send out a batch of queries to some of the agents that you recently found could be the one for you. So instead of just set, doing all the work, because I mean it takes a couple hours usually per your letter if you're like starting from scratch and you're obviously trying to tailor it to them that's how it should always be right so after you do all that work don't just jump into your next thing and just feel bad about always sending out these queries and getting rejections give yourself a little bit of reward maybe maybe instead of looking forward to a movie thing every time you do it i don't know get up and get a treat or maybe not every time maybe that's i mean i love dr pepper so that would be a good motivator for me but find a way to make it just a little bit better for yourself before you go back and dive into the other hard work that you're doing. Distinguish it as something different and unique to you and something that has a small reward because that psychology is going to start changing your mindset into thinking instead of, oh, I have to send out these query letters and I just feel like I did a ton of work and I'm not going to get anything back to like, oh, I sent those out. So now I get my little, my little me up for the day and then I can go back to what I'm doing. And then that will kind of change the way you think of it. So step number one, stop trying to block the sting expect the sting embrace the suck embrace the sting <laughs> number two create like a business transaction understand that you're going to only find one right business partner and that's not them yet take away the mystery from the query letter number three reward yourself if you do it in small ways or maybe collect them like me have a little bigger of a reward those three things have been immensely helpful in removing myself from query letters and rejections and remembering that it's not my worth it's not a sign of my worth and it's not a sign of the worth of my writing it's just a sign of the timing it's a sign of expectations of the market and you can do this and whether it's 101 or whether it's 500 if you believe in what you're doing and you're pursuing it then it is worth doing because it's not about just 
having other people tell you that you're successful. It's about proving to yourself what you're capable of doing and the kind of person that you are and the integrity that you have. So that's my episode for you this week. I hope it's helpful. I hope it prompts you a little to start thinking about ways that you can reward yourself and also to kind of let that go. I would love to hear in the comments what you thought about this episode and things that you have been doing to help you stay on the track of keeping it in the business mindset instead of personal rejection. That's all this week, and I hope you lovely word wizards have a wonderful week and that it is filled with lots of time for writing and rest. See ya.